I'd like to welcome everyone to our webinar on the Family Support Waiver. And I'm so pleased and thrilled that we have as a speaker today, Rachel Deaton, who's an Autism Support Coordinator. She's been with the Autism Society of Indiana for five years now. And she's kind of the guru of the Autism Waiver, um, the Family Support Waiver through uh, ASI. Um, she's also the parent. She has a 17-year-old son on the autism spectrum and another child as well. Mm -hmm. um, and so um, she's speaking of, of, about this from firsthand experience. Rachel, do you wanna go on to the next slide? So thank you for joining us. The webinar is being recorded. Your microphone is muted. Um, the speaker will speak for about 20 to 30 minutes. To ask questions, click the Q&A button on the bottom of the, your screen. If you wanna send a question anonymously, you can check that. Um, and the moderator, as we're going through the questions, may actually restate your questions. I know, Rachel, you're also fine with them putting things in chat as things come up. So we'll be looking at those as well. All web webinars will be posted this school year to attendees and on the IRCA Facebook page. We have to take, go through a process of closed captioning them to be able to do that. Um, we also know that sometimes folks come to these webinars with questions about specific children or adults, and it really is hard to answer those questions in this kind of a context. So if you have questions, you need more assistance, you need more guidance, whatever, we're here to help. Please do not hesitate to email me at any time and we can arrange a time to talk. So Rachel, it's all yours now. Hello, um, just a little bit about me. I do have a 17 year old son with autism and um, I didn't even know what autism was um, before he was diagnosed. I sent him to church, our church preschool when he was three. And the second day the teacher came to me and said, I think you need to take your child to school and have him evaluated. I don't think we can uh, help him here. And that was my first steps into autism. Um, and at that point in time, I was just um, wanting to learn and help him as much as I can. I learned how to do ABA in my house. I learned how to do speech. I learned how to do um, some physical therapy with him. Um, and I started my own support groups. So that's how I got this job is I was in my own area in Pendleton, Indiana, and I had started some support groups. Um, I had some, a lot of parents calling and asking me questions. And that's the autism side he came to me and said, hey, how would you like to get paid for what you're doing? And I said, that's the best idea I've ever had and you've ever had, so that's exciting. Um, this particular presentation focuses on the family services waiver or supports waiver, sorry about that. Um, so what is a Medicaid waiver is the first question. The program was created in 1981 to replace state institutional care. So the state was moving from um, institutions to having individuals still living in their homes and um, that's what their basis was. Um, the waiver is um, supposed to help support home and community-based services. Um, a few examples of that would be like recreational therapy, respite, um, participant assistant care, which is called PAC. Um, and that is specifically taking individuals um, out into the community to um, integrate them into the community. It may be going to McDonald's to order French fries, or it could go to the grocery store and buying groceries, or it could be playing in the park or going to the library to rent a book. Um, the support is also for the caregiver. Again, the respite, the break for the, the parent. Um, and support is throughout the lifespan of the child. Um, there are two main waivers in, in Indiana, the family support waiver um, that has a budget of $17,300. And then there's the community integration and habitation waiver. This waiver is um, for more severe needs if both parents have passed away, if there's um, very extenuating circumstances to get that waiver. The waiver is based on the disability alone. So it waives parental assets and incomes and um, they're not taken into to consideration to qualify for this waiver and for Medicaid. Um, a lot about of the questions I get first is how will the waiver help my child? Um, you get direct one-on-one -on -one care to work on developmental dis deficits. Um, some of the examples of that would be music therapy or behavioral therapy. Um, if your child is um, lagging in something and they need 
music therapy. Well, your medical insurance won't cover that, but your waiver funds could. Um, it's ex expand opportunities for growth and uh, social and communication and, and community integration. So we want individuals with autism to get out into the community and to receive help and, and help, um, help them learn more about what the community wants from them and what they need from the community. Um, it creates a team of professionals to support both the participants and the caretakers. So if you get the waiver, um, much like if you have um, a special um, child in special education and they have um, a case conference committee, this will be something like that. So they will have a case manager, the parent will be involved, the individual will be involved, and then you might have your therapist there and you also will create a person-centered um, service plan for your, um, for your child, um, and PCISP. Um, so how do you get started with the waiver? So you have to have a qualified medical diagnosis prior to the age of 22. Um, an education evaluation is not um, acceptable for this. You, you have to have um, a medical diagnosis. Um, you have to complete an application obtained through the Bureau of Developmental Disability Services, um, or otherwise known as BEADS. Um, we are going to go through that application. It's included in this um, presentation, but you would also have, um, you could call your BEADS office in your area and find that. And um, you can get, I think we're going to email that to you also. And you have to demonstrate um, a need for level of care. And that right there is how you qualify for the waiver is the level of care needs. Um, this is the districts for the BEADS office. Um, wherever you live at is where you would be applying for and calling that office. Um, and we have a map also that will be emailed to you. So level of care is the standard that beads use to determine if your child qualifies for the waiver. It is important for caregivers to really focus on this because this is the most important part of the application. You have to be honest and you have to look at it from a deficit point of view. Um, this is often very difficult for parents to do. I don't want to write down all the things that my child lacks in. I don't want to write all the negative things about my child down anywhere. I, as a mother, want to always think that my son is doing the best, but this is where you need to really focus on that. Um, you have to describe how the disability affects your life. Um, you have to, you know, there's a little, a little bitty box, and in that little bitty box, they want you to write all this information, so I often recommend that you write C attached, and you can write it in bullet proof form or paragraph form, but you need to display any um, behaviors and concerns that are not appropriate, um, developmentally appropriate for children of the same age. Um, keep in mind, this looks different from every child and every age. So some examples would be, my child has limited speech or echolalia. Um, my child runs away or runs toward water or elopes. Um, my child only eats certain foods, um, certain textures, certain colors. My child cannot bathe or dress themselves independently. Again, those expectations would change from a two-year-old to a 17-year-old. Um, if you have an older child, you know, can they actually bathe themselves if they, without a chart on the wall or without somebody verbally prompting them through the process? Will they remember to wash their hair and their face and then, you know, Will they appropriately dry themselves? Will they be able to write, um, you know, make sure they wash their toes? Will they be able to brush their teeth? Can they do that without the verbal prompts or the, the visual cues and A's? And what do they need that they can get through their day? Um, can they independently toilet themselves? Do they remember to wipe? Do they remember to wash their hands? Can, do they, do they play in their diapers if they're younger? Are they um, potty trained or, or do they still need help? Um, those are things. Um, do they hit or do they bite? Are they violent with others? Um, if this is something that's a part of your life, even a little bit, you want to document that because if somebody else had to come in and take care of your child, would they have to deal with violence or, or a meltdown? And what does that look like? Um, 
during COVID, my son has done really, really well without having any violence or meltdowns. I mean, over a year, he hasn't had any, but this past few weeks, it seems to be, you know, he's had two, two violent uh, meltdowns where he just was so confused about where he was supposed to be. Is he supposed to be at school? Is he supposed to be, why can't he see his grandparents at Christmas? You know, he still has meltdowns and that would be a level of care that is not expected um, of, a, of a parent with a typical child. Um, they don't recognize dangerous situations. Will they talk to strangers? Will they talk to individuals in a grocery store that they don't know? Will they walk away with them? Will they be able to look both ways when they cross the street? Will they be able to um, not touch something that's hot? Can they use the stove appropriately? You know, will they be able to um, know that it's hot and they need oven mitts? Can they use the microwave? Can they make their bed? Can they pick up their toys? Can they take care of, of basic household chores? And do they understand the concept of money? Will they be able to understand that they have to work to earn money to pay for the things that they need? Will they have understand that, you know, if you want to turn on the lights, you have to pay a bill. Um, if you want to buy food at the grocery store, you have to have money to pay for it. And not that mom always has a plastic card because my son has said that before. He said, you know, I have a plastic, I just need your card, mom. You know, he doesn't really understand where the money comes from. That's a concept that you have to work on. And not just what's a quarter or a dime or a dollar, but how money is earned and what it, how it's saved and how, how it's used. Um, are there any questions at this time? Okay, I'm gonna um, go on then if there's not any questions. Um, we do have a couple questions. Does the okay. waiver cover hippotherapy? What kind of therapy? Hippotherapy. Um, hmm. I don't think so. I have not seen that covered in any of the options. Okay. If it is a medical therapy, the Medicaid might cover it that comes with it, but it would be different than what the waiver covers. Okay. How about how often can I change services? Um, you get to pick, and we're going to talk about that a little bit later in the service, but you can change your service at, in, at how much you use any, any time. Another one is from anonymous attendees. Does school information or an evaluation help me get services? Um, I included my son's IEPs and I included his behavior plans with schools because it actually, um, it was further proof of the deficits in the level of care he needed. You don't have to include it, um, but I, I included all that extra information when I applied for the waiver for my son. Um, another one is from Michelle Morimoto. Um, is is beads similar to other states? Um, every state has different different programs that run this. It's not all called beads. Um, and some states, like Illinois, they have such a deficit in income, they have no money that they there's like twenty year waiting list. Um, and each each state runs it a little bit differently. So some states will give money for um, different types of schooling. So it's not regulated um, as an overview, like it's not the same in each state, like social security is. It's different from state to state. Okay. There's also a clarification in the chat box about hippotherapy. Somebody says it's provided by occupational therapy or physical therapy. So if that is what you're looking for, you would, when you get Medicaid, with this, you get Medicaid for the disabled, um, and it's a different level of Medicaid than income-based Medicaid, and this Medicaid, you can get pre-authorizations for things like um, applied behavioral analysis, um, physical therapy, um, speech therapy, um, other things like that. So it doesn't come out of your waiver budget of $17,300. 
it comes out of, of Medicaid. Okay, and then uh, Tony Sims says, my son already has the beads Medicaid waiver and has for several years now. Will this webinar cover anything that I wouldn't already know? Or is this more information for people who are planning to apply? Um, so this is more for people who wanna apply, but also, I also talk about pick list, how to choose services, um, how the money works a little bit later than this. Um, so if you have questions or, or you're having difficulties with that, I will get into that in a few minutes. Okay. Kathy also said that the waiver is not transferable across state lines. Right. Yeah, it is not. And each state runs it differently. So if you move to a different state, you would have, to, even, even if they had waivers and they had wait lists, you would have to start the process over. Okay. Rachel, I would just go ahead with the presentation. We can get to the rest of the questions later. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So some of the next steps is make a copy of the application. Um, and I'm going to tell you this as one of the most important things I've ever learned as a parent with a child with autism or special needs, um, you have to keep a copy of everything. You don't mail anything to anybody. You don't email anything to everybody unless you have a copy somewhere. If you have it on a jump drive, if you have it in a box, if you have anything that your child ever needs, the original diagnosis, you need to put that in a fire safe box because people are gonna be asking you that for the rest of your life. Um, so those are things that are very, very important. Um, you mail the application to the BEADS office and BEADS will contact you in 30 days to set up an intake interview. And your child will ask to attend. Um, currently they're doing this via, um, like we're doing now, a, um, a presentation, I don't, um, Zoom, something like that. So they would wanna see your child that way. Um, this is the intake, and from this time, then you'll be on the clock for the waiver wait list. Um, so you get targeted for the waiver, now what? So if they call you or they send you a letter in the mail and say you've been targeted, your child has been targeted for the waiver, they're gonna set up a second interview. And this, um, the wait list is currently eight to 12 months. Um, and when they set up the second interview, they're gonna to talk to you about like what your child needs. They're gonna go over more in information about your child, what a typical day looks like for your child. And then they're gonna give you a pick list. And so when you get final approval for this, you're gonna get a pick list of case management companies. This pick list is gonna have lots and lots and lots of companies on it. Um, and a lot of people, a lot of parents post on Facebook, like what is the best case management company? And that is one way to go about it. But I would suggest that you call the, the companies and if they answer your, phone, your questions right away, then they're gonna be helpful. If they're helpful, the person who answers your phone gets you to somebody right away to help you, then you know they're always gonna be there for you. If they send you to a voicemail and that person doesn't get back to you for a week, that's probably gonna be their turnaround time in the whole company. So you have to think about what you need and whether it feels right with you and ask lots of questions. Ask about the availability. Um, can your case manager meet during the day? Can your case manager meet in the evening? What's good for you? And that's when you need to pick the case management company. And the reason why I say it's, it is important to get other parents' opinions, but it's also important for you to ask your own questions for your family's needs. So, once you get a case management company and you have to choose a case management company, it is the only thing that you have to choose when you get the waiver. Um, the case management company will come in and they'll, the case manager will talk to you about what you want your child to have, um, what you think your child needs. Does your child need behavior management um, therapy because they just, you're having so many behavior problems at home? Or maybe your child really reacts to music and so your child needs music therapy or maybe your child, um, you just need a break. You can't have, you, there's no family that lives around you, nobody that can watch your child and you just need a break, you and your husband or, or you need to go out and spend a couple hours buying groceries by yourselves without a kid in the cart. Um, so those are the things that you should talk about with your case management company and then they will help you choose the services that you get. Um, this is really an important step because this is like your first your first steps in there. And once you pick the services, 
the case manager is going to give you a lot, lot more pick list. There's a pick list for music therapy. There's a pick list for participant assisted care, PAC. There's a pick list for respite. There's a pick list for um, recreational therapy. You know, there's a pick list for behavior therapy. Um, so each of these pick lists, you know, have lots and lots of providers on them. And then you have to, again, go through the process of picking, calling all of them and seeing which ones have, are available in your area, which ones can help you. What's the wait list for those individuals? Um, music therapy often has a wait list and you can't, you can't get that. And then another consideration is, is that you only have $17,300. And so that there's this piece of the pie as a circle, right? And so like music therapy is very expensive. So you probably might only have like a quarter of the pie left um, for respite if you, if you want respite or you might have, you know, um, some, some for behavior over here. So you have to think about what you really need and what's most important and how much it costs. And your case manager manages that budget for you. Um, and then you, once you start to begin services around your schedule, um, you can you can then be able to work on that. But another wonderful thing about um, the waiver is that you do get Medicaid um, disability or traditional Medicaid. It's been called a couple different things. Um, this right here is the biggest help for um, my family. We have extremely high deductible insurance. We have $5,000 for the individual and we have $8,000 family deductible. So anything that my son needs um, medically, it goes first to my private insurance and then it goes to Medicaid. So Luke's services for the first few months of the year are covered by Medicaid and it's, and it's deducted from my deductible. Um, so if Luke um, goes to see his neurologist, if he goes to see his physical therapist, if he goes to see his, um, if he has a seizure and he has to have an MRI or he has to have an EEG or, um, you know, those are all things that are covered by this traditional Medicaid that's not taken out of the $17,300. Um, his medicines alone cost us thousands of dollars um, for his epilepsy. So, you know, this is taken from the Medicaid disabled pot um, and, and it's deducted from our, our disability or from our um, deductible. Sorry about that. So, this right here has saved my family from being on the brink of uh, financial, you know, ruin many times when things like that happen and, and when he has to have um, procedures or testing done that are just really expensive. And we all know that special needs kids have to have lots more um, attention in those areas than normal. Um, so again, this is based on the disability and qualifications for the waiver. It does not take into consideration parents' assets or incomes. It covers everything that Medicaid typically covers and more. Um, it can be used as a primary insurance, a secondary insurance, or even a third insurance if both parents have insurance. And the participant will not lose coverage if the parent's um, financial situation changes. So if both parents are unemployed now, but then they get jobs later, they're not going to lose this Medicaid. Um, this Medicaid is is meant to be helpful for individuals who have extremely um, extreme needs, um, like they need the waiver and they understand that. Um, so another thing is, is what if I'm not happy with my services? Um, that was a particular question before. All providers are hired and fired at your discretion, including your case manager and your case management company. So if you think that your case manager didn't really explain to you the system very well or isn't returning your phone calls or emails or isn't changing your budget appropriately in a timely manner, then you can you can change case management companies. You call beads and you say, I don't want this case management company. I want to pick another one. Can you send me the pick list again? Um, you can change providers of a service or change the type of service anytime. Um, so if your child is younger and you want them to have music therapy, but then they're a teenager and they're going through puberty and they need behavior therapy, you can change that at any time. It's your case manager, manager's job to carry out the changes and figure out um, bu budget related issues. So if you say, hey, you know, music therapy really isn't doing it for my child anymore, um, but I really think that we could use respite because I need a break from him and I'd really need some behavior help because it's just getting really bad at home with some of his behaviors. 
your case manager is supposed to like balance that out and tell you the options. But you can have this many hours in behavior therapy and you can have this many hours of respite. And please keep in mind that each service costs different. So music therapy is really expensive um, and some other therapies cost less. So you can, might be able to get a lot more respite than you would music therapy. Um, oh, this again, I'm just discussing the changes. What if your child grows? Um, and you can try options that, I, that might not be accessible outside the waiver, which is talking about like recreational therapy, um, talking about, I know a lot of people want their individuals, their children to learn how to swim because it's the number one cause of death for children with autism, um, drowning is. So a lot of our, our children, um, they use the waiver for um, PAC, Participant Assistance Care, and they have those individuals go swimming with their child and learn how to swim. And maybe they do swim lessons and the, the, the PAC person, the direct care staff goes with them and learns how to swim with the child and helps through the process. So, you know, there's different different things you can do. Um, you can also, in the waiver, you know, if your child is a loper, you can get some money to build a fence in your house. You can do, you have a certain allotted budget to use over your lifetime of your child for things like that. Or if your child um, is limited mobility, you might be able to get a ramp. Or if your child needs, um, I think there's some, alert systems that you can purchase for your child. So those are things that you can get. And the Medicaid for the disabled um, also helps with communication devices. I get that question a lot also. Um, and this is this here is really tricky. So when your child turns 18, um, if you do not have guardianship of your child, um, then the control of the waiver and the services goes directly to the child. So nobody can tell, none of the case managers or um, anybody at BEADS will be able to talk to you about the waiver. Um, you could have supported decision making or power of attorney that would also help you with that. Um, and the key when your child turns 18 is that the qualification for the waiver no longer is based on level of care needs, but it's based on your SSI eligibility. So to keep the waiver when you turn 18, you have to qualify for SSI, and if you don't qualify for SSI, you lose the waiver and you lose the Medicaid that comes with the waiver. Um, also, when they turn 18, because of the SSI um, qualifications to get SSI, assets and incomes after expenses cannot exceed $2,000. Um, so are there any questions um, about that part of the presentation? I think Rachel, we're just going to go on because. Um, okay, we'll just hour. wait till the end. Yeah. Okay. So this is what the application actually looks like. Um, this is the first page of the application. Um, please, it's very important to note that um, this uh, this here is my office in my area. This is not your office. You will have to mail your application to the office in your district. Okay. Um, so do not do not um, mail it to this Muncie address unless you live in my area, okay? Um, and we're gonna go through all the forms that are attached with this. So this is the application. Um, this is the main form, the applicant. Um, right here is your child's information. That's your child's name. Um, and that would be, your child's information. If you do not have Medicaid already, you would leave that empty. This is right here. Um, marital status obviously should be single unless they are over the age of 18. Um, the highest level education, you would put where they're at um, in school. And ap um, applicants' housing situation would be who they're living with. Um, and this down here, this section right here is for the parent. Um, and the information about the parent or guardian. And this section right here is the most important section, the part, the section we were talking about earlier. Um, age first disabled is when they were diagnosed. Um, and then here is the section where you would write C attached. Um, I'm trying to do it with my mouse. Um, 
and then you would you would add that level of care notes that you um, had before. Um, the bulletproof of what it's like and what your child needs um, on an average day. This right here is the most important part of the application um, from a parent's perspective. Then we have the physician's paperwork. So um, you will need to mail this to your child's physician. You'll put in the date and the your child's name and the date of birth. And then um, you will send that on. Um, and this is the, they will, they, you will fill this out, um, the consumer information, you fill that out. And then the doctor fills out this part. Um, I will tell you that I sent this to um, my child's um, general practitioner. Then he, she see, he sees a neurologist. Um, I sent it to his ABA therapist, and I sent it to his um, autism specialty doctor. So these were the things that um, I sent them to everybody. And then I asked them to give the copies back to me, and I made copies of them and sent them to beads. I did that specifically because I wanted copies and I didn't want them to have to, if they got lost in the mail, if they got lost in the shuffle, I didn't want the doctor's offices to keep um, being bombarded with questions or asking for paperwork. And they will ask for more paperwork. Um, they will ask questions about your child. Um, they will sometimes want clarification. They'll ask for more documentation. Um, and you might have to sign releases for that. Um, this here is a right for the notice to, notice to appeal if your child is denied the waiver, and it tells about the process. And this is just a copy for you. This is just an extra copy. And then this is the BEADS office locations, phone numbers, counties that are included, and which office you should call. Um, the top link here is the link for the wait list. So if you've already applied for the waiver, this is where you would go to look for your spot and how long you might be targeted for the waiver. And the bottom is a waiver manual. And I know that some people are very, very into details and want to know all the details of the waiver. This waiver manual tells you everything that you could possibly want to know about the waiver in Indiana. Um, so if you have more questions, you can always call the BEADS office. Um, if you already have the waiver, you can call your case manager if you're asking about, you know, the budget questions, pick list questions, things like that. And you can always call um, the Autism Society of Indiana and we will help you. Um, the Autism Society offers some different services. Um, we have area or autism support coordinators. That's my job that I help um, around the state I help parents, educators, and other providers. I teach about autism, I teach about waivers, I teach about things that um, families might need. Um, and we're really a, a mediator. So if a family calls us and says, I'm having problems with insurance coverage, we're gonna try to get you to the people who know the most about helping you get insurance coverage. We have a Spanish speaking um, autism support creator. We have career specialists to help individuals with autism. Um, find out what they want to do in the future, what kind of employment they might want. Um, we are a pack and respite provider through the waiver system. So, and we specifically only service individuals with autism. And we have a monthly newsletter. Um, this is our number. Um, and uh, this is our website. And this is specifically my information if you want to get a hold of me.